Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bitcoin Show. This is a live CES, Consumer Electronics Show, 2012 edition. And uh, we have an amazing opportunity to have uh, the cast members from The Good Wife. You've heard of The Good Wife on CBS. Everybody watches it. And, uh, the, and everybody in the Bitcoin world knows that there's going to be a Bitcoin episode this Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So we have with us uh, Nicholas Flower. Hi. and Robert Taylor. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome to the Bitcoin Show. This is Bruce Wagner, you know. And uh, I am live here in C at CES, uh, Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And um, I just arrived late last night, but uh, we got the most incredible coup because everyone knows that, as I said, the, the Good Wife on CBS is doing a major episode all about Bitcoin. It's called Bitcoin for Dummies is the title of the episode. And they're going to talk about Satoshi and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, but anyway, we got a major coup because we have with us some of the cast members from The Good Wife. And uh, so with us are Nicholas Flower and Robert Taylor. They're in the studio in New York. I'm in Las Vegas. So can you say, hey guys. Uh, uh, Br Bruce, um, we're actually taking <laughs> over. We're the hosts today. Yes. You're the host. That's right. And I'm the guest. So you can ask me questions. <laughs> Go ahead, ask. <laughs> well, I, I also want to I want to make clear. You're no. a cast. I, uh, Nick is a cast member. I was standing in that day when we when we met. So I, I'm not a cast member. So you're, oh, you're not, a, not a regular cast member, but you're standing in. Well, you right. were on the cast that day. Is that it? No, 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 no. Only Nick. He, he's, the, he's the guy that's going to get the credits on the show. Oh, right. okay, you're, okay. You're the cast of my Cool. He's and I've, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. The, I've already been um, told to ask, obviously, the, the obvious question. Um, what is it like to work with Juliana Margulies? Margulies. How do you say your last name? <laughs> well, it was... It was really great. She was very nice. Um, when I got on set, the very first moment, it was, it was pretty funny. I didn't recognize her. Um, you know, we went in for a rehearsal and we started it up. And it was with Jason Biggs and uh, David Furr. And she interrupts the scene. Um, and so here, here she comes. And you know, she's not in costume yet. She hasn't, she hasn't uh, done costume or makeup. And she comes in and does her lines, and I'm like, oh, I wonder why her stand-in is reading her lines. And then she introduces herself. <laughs> and it was the straight hair, too. I, I, you know, grew up watching ER, and so, you know, I have yeah. this idea of, of her with curly hair. And so I just, it was kind of embarrassing, it really was. But uh, she was very, very nice. <laughs> um, she was very accessible and introduced herself and just was totally normal. Very, very... Relaxed, yes. funny. She was, you know. That's how. That's how I like my stars to be hot and accessible. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you need to be. Yeah. You know, she, a. she was uh, <laughs> talking with people on set and just being really nice. She she wasn't like, um, it, it wasn't like she needed everyone to know that the that she was on set. She just kind of was on set. You know, it was just living yeah. and and doing her that's her job. Great. That's great. Yeah. That's great. That's great. That's how she, people should be. People are just people anyway. So I people agree. that are full of themselves are just full of themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna come back to the gossip and, and dish the dirt. As to, I wanna I wanna I have a lot more about that. But I wanna know about Bitcoin. Had you ever heard of Bitcoin before you were handed this script? No, I had not. You guys? I had not. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Robert, I have talked with you, and I found out you you were already a Bitcoin. In, fan right you, how, when did you find out about it robert I, I i don't know specifically the 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 date but i do remember being in california and i think it was either late 09 or early i no you know i i feel like it was somewhere mid or, or late 09 is when i first heard about it and i didn't get really into it until it got very close to reaching parity with the dollar Yeah. 
<laughs> it's funny how we measure Bitcoin time by the value of Bitcoin. Right. Well, when it was seven dollars, that's when I got I got in at a dollar ninety eight. You know, <laughs> it was so funny. Then when it hit thirty, I cried. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I bought it at thirty and sold it at a dollar. <laughs> so, um, okay. So Nicholas, what? Um, when? Uh, like how, how long ago did you? Were you hand? And you, the first time you heard the word Bitcoin, then a few weeks ago. Yeah, well, I guess we shot the episode maybe Gary? a month ago, and I had I was handed the script maybe a week before we shot the the episode, and so I had yeah. very very little time to kind of you know digest do, it. do my do my research, but I, I did, and you know, kind of got the general overview of you know, it's. Obviously, been around for mm -hmm. a while now to pick up some speed, but um, yeah, I found it really, really interesting. I, I was talking to Robert earlier. I, I find it so interesting that uh, it's really hard mm -hmm. to counterfeit. Cool. I think that's pretty cool. And uh, but yeah, I, I was handed the script a week before. I I knew nothing about it, so I did my research and kind of just jumped in. I, 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 I can ask him a couple of questions. So, sure. Uh, <laughs> how about Jason Biggs? How, I thought he was super down to earth. Jason Biggs was really cool. Uh, my one of my favorite moments on set. Well, not on set, just you know, yeah. in the experience was my interaction, my first interaction with Jason Biggs. I had to be at the van at seven thirty in the morning. Um, in like Midtown and we were just to be driven to the studio and no one's really around. It's kind of, you know, just the city's just kind of sleeping still. Right. And I see a van and it has the sign that says the good wife and the, there's just two people in the van. It's uh, the driver and the passenger and the passenger is, his window is down and I start walking up and the passenger's like Nicholas Flower. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, Jason, Biggs. <laughs> My mind is blown. And so I got in the van and just the, the three of us kind of just yeah. rode to the studio together. And yeah. it, was, it was funny. It was, it was you know, it, I didn't want to talk to him too much because it was 7.30 in the morning. Right. Like we're all kind of groggy, just having our morning coffee. But, but I mean, he, he dresses <laughs> like in, the, in like these just casual like yeah. homeboy jeans and like... You know, just like, it's, I think he got even some with a backpack and just yeah. like a grungy jacket. And he's yeah, he's like an just guy. really chill. Yeah. He's really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, and I thought it was really interesting um, seeing him kind of, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say starstruck, but yeah, a little starstruck with Bob Balaban. Oh, yeah? I, yeah. I mean, you know, it, like, you know, Bob Balaban's, it, it's Bob Balaban, you know? So, and they had never met before. And so yeah. I thought that was really cool That's to fun. see him being like, you know, yeah. around someone who he really admired, and then who does Bob play in the in the, in the episode? Um, Bob plays a well. I don't want to give it away. He's a, he's actually re um, he's uh, re he's a reoccurring character now. This is his second uh, appearance on the show, and he plays my boss. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess I just haven't I seen his character's either. name, but <laughs> I think we got him back. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> so, Nicholas, when you were handed this script and it said Bitcoin in it, you had never heard of the word Bitcoin. What, like, did you have any idea what it was? I had no idea. Um, the only thing I really knew, you know, from the very beginning, was that my character, uh, a federal agent from the Treasury, was very nervous about this strange online currency that had been created, and and my my job was to basically nail the creator and so yeah. from then I just kind of googled it and did a little, little research and you know found a, a bunch of different you know topics on it you know from Wikipedia to YouTube shows to, to everything and it's it was really clear to me that that it's not just some passing trend it seems so you were you knew that it was actually something real. It wasn't completely fictional. Yes, I did. 
knew it was real. Okay. And so, but what, because somebody had said, like, oh, no, that's a real thing. <laughs> I mean, I literally just Googled it. I, I just, I didn't really know what it was. And um, actually, the original... You the script and you Googled it. Is this real? <laughs> the original wow. title uh, was different. It was called Finding, uh, Mr. Finding Mr. Bitcoin. Kind of a play on Finding Mr. Goodyear. Uh, right. Yeah. Exactly. So... Uh, good, I, so good uh, when you good so bar. you play the role, I'm so, I can't hear Robert. But when you when you you uh, <laughs> I had to pass the phone back and forth. Anyway, it's crazy. So when you um, were so you play the the attorney who uh, has the client Satoshi, who um, and you're protecting his identity. Is that right? No, I'm actually a federal agent from the Treasury. Who oh. uh, I'm a pair. I'm one uh, half of a pair. Of federal agents who's very nervous about Mr. Bitcoin himself, and they're basically right. after. Um, we're kind of aware that uh, Jason Biggs' character is an online lawyer, and we suspect that his client is Mr. Bitcoin. So, Mr. Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, that's what. That's actually the original. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but that was the original title of the episode was... <laughs> I don't think that... I don't think yeah, I don't changing know. titles... Finding like, Mr. Bitcoin. Yeah. That's funny. I like Bitcoin for dummies. I, I like that I better, say, too. Our, our website is... Yeah, yeah. I hope they don't get sued by the Four Dummies book series, <laughs> but that's okay. It's all good. <laughs> that's CBS's problem. So, um, so what... <laughs> so, um, when you Googled it, and you, I mean, you already knew it was a real thing. I mean, what was your first impression about it? it does this seem like... I mean, did, did it seem like this is a real thing, or I mean, not, not you know it's a real thing, but it, like this is a uh, a growing movement, or does it seem, did it seem like a real off the wall, uh, uh, you know, specialty kind of thing? Well, you know, that's that's really interesting because Quirky thing. when I Googled it, I definitely found a multitude of of, of topics on, on it, and <laughs> I would say like the first three were. Uh, you know, Bitcoin and Ponzi scheme, Ponzi scheme, Ponzi scheme. And right. it was, um, that was the first thing that entered my brain when I, I uh, read about it. And so I definitely was approaching it thinking like, okay, this is um, probably, you know, passing quickly. But then as I, as I, you know, read on and kind of Found about found out about all the investors and and you know how how many people were involved and you know how how serious it is. Could kind of see that it it's going to be around. It looks like it's going to be around for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's not a it's not a Ponzi scheme, obviously, because the definition of a by definition a Ponzi scheme is that the new and uh, new investors capital that they put in goes to the old investors. Um, so obviously it's not a Ponzi scheme, <laughs> but uh, you know that's people like to throw those words around because they don't know what it is. It's brand new, you know, in the history of mankind. It's never existed before, so they try and put it in a box that already has a label. So they'll put it in, you know, Ponzi scheme or MLM or all kinds of crazy nonsense. But it it is definitely not that. So uh, anyway, and people people love to. And, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just was going to say people fear what they don't understand, and when it's new like that, it's yes. scary. Yes, that's right. That's for sure. They do. And it's, I mean, like I, I always say, I mean, this is really new in the history of mankind. There's never been a currency that's completely decentralized and limited in quantity. It's not issued by any bank or government, uh, you know, or corporation. This is really, really unique. So, uh, of course, you know, The Good Wife and, uh, is very timely with its, uh, you know, topics, everything from Occupy Wall Street to now Bitcoin, because it's, it's in the news. Okay, this seems like a good time to uh, take a break and thank our sponsors who are bringing us to you, obviously. Um, Mount Vox is mtgox.com. Mount Vox is the place to go online to buy and sell Bitcoin. They are the world's largest exchange. Mount Vox is to Bitcoin like the New York Stock Exchange is to stock. So um, you, there are millions of ways, not millions, literally, but lots and lots of ways to get money into Mount Vox and out of Mount Vox. Uh, it's the only exchange in the world, actually. Bitcoin is the only exchange in the world that is 24-7. People at 365, people ask me, what, what was the closing price yesterday? And I'm like, there is no closing. The Bitcoin market never sleeps. It's 24-7. So Mt. Gox is uh, like something like 80 to 90% market share of all trades that happen, happen on Mt. Gox. So that's the place to do your online trading. It's mtgox.com. They have 26 plus currencies. Um, they operate uh, obviously globally. So check it out, mountdocs.com, and tell them 
Bitcoin.com, which is a new venture that uh, we've initiated to make it easy to hold people's hand and help them buy Bitcoin easily and anonymously, instantly. It's BuyBitcoin.com and the Buy Bitcoin hotline. So check it out. You can call 646-580-0022 from anywhere in the world. Uh, that's the New York number. And just check out BuyBitcoin.com and BitcoinSolutions.com. Bitcoin Solutions is another venture of ours that we are launching, which is uh, Merchant Services. If your business, whether it's an online web store or a brick and mortar business of any kind, whether you're an accountant, a CPA, a nail salon, or a restaurant, it doesn't matter. Look for you want to be set up to accept Bitcoin in just in moments. Say. There are zero transaction fees, zero monthly and maintenance fees, zero hardware investment, and there's no such thing as a chargeback. You'll never, ever can get a chargeback with Bitcoin. We're there to help you set up your business to accept Bitcoin. That's BitcoinSolutions.com. So check that out. Okay. So now back to uh, Robert and Nicholas. So where were we? Um, so I was asking you, um, Nicholas, so like, after you Googled Bitcoin, I, you, you, the first things that you read were about that it's a Ponzi scheme or something, and then you started re realizing and reading that it, it's actually it's more to it than that. What, like, how large did you perceive that the community was, the Bitcoin community, the user base? Initially, I, I didn't realize how big it was. Um, you know, it kind of, it kind of seemed like uh, your standard internet bashers, you know, your trolls, just kind of lingering around. And as I did more research, I, I realized that the community was very large. And as a, as a new community, it's kind of amazing how, how fast it's grown and how much it's ex expanded and, and picked up speed. And yeah, so that was really, really interesting to me. Oh, I didn't say anything. Oh, that's my, I'm sorry, that's myself coming back. I'm hearing myself. And, um, sorry. <laughs> now, my question Just the way you're holding it, it's um, doing I'm a little bit of echo. If the uh, cast or anybody bought any Bitcoin knowing, well, you know, that this is uh, going to be major, major publicity. Um, yeah, actually, that's what we were just talking about. Um, I, I think that that probably will, uh, in, in some way, uh, help help the uh, market or help the community that's for sure once this this comes out uh, once the episode airs on Sunday I think that um, I think you can expect something like that I mean I, I'm definitely not a, a uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not well, I'm not an investor nor am I you know someone to uh, <laughs> really uh, share much of an opinion on 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 the the market itself, but I I, I would I would say that if it's so popular right now, and then you take a show like The Good Wife, which is an Emmy and Golden Globe winning show, which a lot of people watch, I think that it's going yeah. to really raise a lot of curiosity for the people that have no idea what it is, and. What a great title for that, you know, Bitcoin for Dummies. What a great title to get people even more interested. That's the phrase I always use when I was describing BitcoinMe.com is that I created that kind of as a Bitcoin for Dummies. Just to explain it in really simple language to, you know, Fred and Mark, you know, the barely can work a mouse browse. And, uh, but yeah, the price has gone up like crazy. It's six ninety one at this moment. And it seems like it's going up about 25 to 50 cents a day. Wow. I mean, at least it seems like so uh, fascinating. And this is right like after. In my early days next week, like Monday through Wednesday next week, there's gonna be a huge buying spree. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. <laughs> Who knows? You know, after, so, after uh, all this, I might I might go out and get some Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, talk to me after. I can tell you can hook you up totally. Yeah, please do. I've got connections. I can just ring up Satoshi and he can commit you some more. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in the heart of uh, the Mount Gox booth at CES, so uh, we can get to some Bitcoin, no problem. Nice. But yeah, it would definitely, I mean, if you're, I was going to, I mean, I've been telling my friends, if you're going to buy Bitcoin, definitely do it before Sunday at night. Yeah. I have a, the Monday morning water cooler talk, they're going to say, did you see that, the good wife last night? Yeah, you know, that's a real thing. 
<laughs> you buy that, and uh, it's going to go nuts. Who knows? It could be ten times the current value by then. There's no telling, really. <laughs> it, it could no be... Telling. Uh, oh, Bruce, that's, it, I think it's going to be huge. I want to say that you know, it, it's all there's always the possibility there that there can be over speculation because of this show and the people that are uh, oh, yeah. in in the in the community uh, can. I mean, it's there's always the foreseeable possibility that there that there's a kind of a confirmation loop, a kind of a. a yeah confirmation bias and they and they might over speculate the the, the value of, of bitcoins mm. um but then the, right. but likewise there's always a possibility that such a popular show like the good wife is just going to open an entire new community of people that are going to get interested and uh, start investing in in bitcoin so it's it's interesting yeah, to ultimately it's going to explode <laughs> oh well i know <laughs> i you I, I think you've made some predictions right <laughs> You made some. Well, I think what I, was gonna, what I was saying was that. Sorry, there's a little delay. But what I was going to say is that I'm telling my friends, I mean, this. Like, um, if you're going to buy Bitcoin anytime soon, buy it before Sunday. Um, if you're, I would not buy it necessarily next week because everyone's going to be buying it next week. And you're going to get caught by that speculator's uh, little. It's not a bubble, but it's like a little bubble. It's going gonna, it, to it's gonna go up and it'll come back down a bit. It'll correct later. So if you're going to buy it as an investment, buy it and hold it for at least a year and you can't go wrong. As long as you buy it and hold it for a year, you really can't go wrong. But if you're going to buy it in the next few weeks, definitely buy it before Sunday. <laughs> right, right. Especially if you're trying to do some right? some quick investing. Mm. Yeah. It seems it seems yeah, like that's... I mean, it could, go up to, it could go up to $70 a Bitcoin next week and then come back down to, to 10 If it goes, out to, if it goes up to 70 I'm definitely pulling out. And it's gone. Yeah. Well, it's all about timing, isn't it? Uh, well, I was telling you uh, when we met that I was uh, I I made the I made the decision to pull out at thirty. Okay. I was like, this is this is good, and I sent all my money to I. This is this is a true story. I sent my money to Mount Gox, and uh, uh -huh. it did it. Mount Gox did not like give me a confirmation that they had my money yet. So I had a birthday party to go to in Brooklyn. So I left my house and I just left my computer. And then uh, the next day, it, it went from 30 to 20. And I was like, I was like, it's gonna, I, I thought, it's going to go back up one more time. And then the, I went to Vegas, where you are now, Bruce, and the, the Mt. Gox scandal happened. The, the, hacking, the hacking scandal. There was a hacking scandal. Mm. It caused a lot of, uh, like... Uh, Uncertainty it's all in the Bitcoin. fun when it doubles, but when it cuts in half, it's not so much fun. Right. So, <laughs> so I'm still holding on to my bitcoins, uh, and uh, but yeah, you, that's but, the thing. You know that. Because the thing is, that if you bought them at, at uh, when you bought right. them at thirty, even even if people bought them at thirty, if it goes up to seventy, if it goes up to hundred by the end of the year, it's still a great investment, even if you bought it at thirty. Right. So you have to hold on to it for a year. Right. And try not to buy the bubble, of course. I, I actually, my, uh, my show on YouTube, which is Prax Girl, P-R-A-X-G-I-R-L, where we talk about the science of praxeology, okay. we only accept Bitcoin donations right now, although there's people that are really pushing us to accept, like, PayPal donations and other things like that, but uh, we only accept Bitcoin donations, so I haven't cashed in any of those donations. <laughs> yeah, that's great. You, you got to hold on to them. By the way, I'm a big fan of Frax Girl. I love it. I just discovered it the other day because I was, uh, you know, we were, <laughs> it's so funny because we were hanging out with, you know, Dan and uh, my friends, uh, uh, Chris and Fred, were like, oh, yeah, he's on um, uh, The Good Wife. And they're like, uh-huh. And then, and uh, he's, he's the one who creates Frax Girl. And they're like, Frax Girl? Oh, my God, Frax Girl. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't even impressed with The Good Wife, but when mm -hmm. they heard you were, you were Frax Girl, you were behind Frax Girl, they were like, 
Thank you. And I think it's great that you accept only Bitcoin. I think more businesses should do that. It just really, if you want to be a Bitcoin evangelist, you're not a Bitcoin evangelist unless you say our business only accepts no. Bitcoin. Right, right. <laughs> well, you, you know, Right. There's there's reasons for us to want to only accept Bitcoin. I mean, a lot of it had to do with Praxgirl herself uh, valuing anonymity. Um, you know, she's a she's like an attractive girl, and she gets a lot of like trolls and stalkers and stuff. Mm. And so there's a there's there's a value in that that you can't really find out who's mm. behind it. Although oh, okay. although I mean I'm 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 here. I'm the creator and all that. Uh, but uh, I was going to say that the important thing that I wanted to say out of this whole thing is that I think everybody that is either looking to invest in Bitcoin or believes in Bitcoin for ideological reasons or any reason why you're getting in Bitcoin, it's always to your best, it's always in your best interest to know as much as possible about what you're getting involved in. And that's why you should definitely learn about the science of praxeology and, um, Understand what money is. Uh, I'm not claiming bitcoins are money, but they're um, they they are uh, definitely a medium of exchange. So you have to understand um, why do bitcoins have any value at all, and uh, uh, you know why is it that that bitcoins work when all these people try to put it down and all that. And mostly it's because. The people, the creators of of Bitcoin, if it's one person or a group of people, they figured out how to um, display property rights in Bitcoins. We can distinguish that a certain Bitcoin belongs to one person as opposed to another person. This the the, the fact that you can't counterfeit Bitcoins is uh, is is the way to show that there is some sort of property right in the in the abstraction because really it's just a bunch of it's a bits bits of information but that's that's really what's going to that's that's what's going to make or break bitcoin as long as they you can enforce property rights uh there's going to be a, a a value for it for anonymity for ease of use for avoiding taxes for all these different things uh it, and it varies with who wants to get involved um but uh I just, I just think it's important for people to really, you can never know too much about what you're getting involved in. So, so it's definitely worth it for people. If you want to learn about Praxeology, go to Prax Girl. That's what I say. Yeah. Go to Prax yeah, Girl's channel on YouTube. What's yeah. The, what's the, oh, so it, you just go to YouTube and then P-R-A-X Girl. P-R-A-X-G-I-R-L. Right. Okay. Prax Girl. And that's where, you know, yeah, we, t we teach the science of Praxeology and it explains these kind of things. It's it's really it's the parent science of economics. Um, it's the logic of all human action. But from it is where you d you understand what what uh, what money is and how it comes to be and why it's important and all that. And um, well, I you I'm know. Telling you, she's educating me because I thought I didn't know practical theology from reflexology. I didn't know what I never heard of it before. But uh, I'm getting an education just watching. Yeah, we, we just did our episode on money uh, last month, so uh, we, we talk about how money comes to be and why it's important, and uh, our last episode, which uh, actually came out on Monday, we talk about economic calculation and what that is, and money serves as a common denominator that allows you to really determine uh, your the, 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 the state that you're in. Uh, as to whether you're going to be able to achieve an end or not, uh, that sounds a little a little complicated, but it's not. It's it's just all it means is that if you're in a barter economy, you have to determine the value of something, uh, at, uh, uh, as opposed to what you're what you want to trade for it. So you so if someone has oranges and you have an apple, you have to value the orange more than the apple, uh, and you have to perform this type of valuation with every single thing that you want to trade, money just removes that. Uh, so something like Bitcoin, if it were to be the predominant medium of exchange in a society 
an online society, for example, uh, it allows people to do, to, ha to, to basically do accounting ledgers, and you can right. add and subtract and multiply and divide one good, which is Bitcoin, against all the other goods you want to buy. It's very simple. This mm -hmm. is, it's, we, we think in these terms all the time with money. Yeah. Right. I mean, we do this all the time, right? We, we say, well, how much money do I have in my pocket and what am I going to be able to do with that money? And it just eliminates, it allows a human being to think in a certain mode that is not possible under barter. And so that's, that's like what we try to talk about. So, yeah. Exactly. yeah. It's uh, essentially, it's, it, it's like right. It. Yeah, it's essentially, it's still barter. The only thing is that now there's this common good that we all that we agreed all trade on. every we we all agreed upon it, right? It, well, the, the it's not it's, it doesn't come about like through a central planner. That's what that's what's so interesting about Bitcoin. It's like oh, I meant uh, USD. I meant USD. Well, yeah, USD. But but you have to understand the history of why USD still has value. Mm -hmm. This is this is a concept that we have called the money regression theory. We have to understand how is it that pieces of paper that aren't backed by anything, how is it that people still accept them for payment for real goods and services? Mm -hmm. And what you find is that that actually uh, I think I have one in my pocket here. You find that once upon a time uh, they were backed by this. Right, so every every dollar was actually the the piece of paper was a representation of one of these in the U.S. Treasury, right. which is where you're supposed to be from in the show. And at some point, they stopped redeeming the pieces of paper for this. But there's a reason why the piece of paper still has a value because people were trading it beforehand. Mm -hmm. So this this is the this is the logic that you have to understand. And I was going to say, Bruce, the only reason that we're not going to cover uh, Bitcoin on our show is because if Bitcoin does turn out to be some sort of trend that dies off, because even if Bitcoin is, even if Bitcoin has a real use, it's foreseeable that some technology could, could surpass and, and replace Bitcoins. And if Bitcoin loses value uh, on a massive scale and, and goes down to one cent again, uh, the, the reason that we don't want to talk about Bitcoin on our show is because this this in terms of propaganda would would be seen as a as a as a win for the people that talk badly about bitcoin and a lose for everyone that supports bitcoin so we don't want to get into that kind of game and we don't talk about bitcoin um aside from accepting donations because it is possible that that uh, the, the market can go t in another direction and people are going to try to use that as some sort of ad hominem attack to show that praxeology uh, is not valid or something. So we don't talk about that. But right. but nevertheless, you can use the... Right. Right. Yes. And if everybody changes their mind, which could happen, right. anything could happen. Um, that could happen to the US dollar or the euro, I agree. Right, like, yeah. Whatever. You know, it could happen to anything. Yeah, what if we. If everybody suddenly uh, lost favor, then of course, the value would go to nothing. Well, what we try to say is, as, um, as opposed to people that talk about Bitcoin and talk about, they use loaded terms like intrinsic value and things like that, uh, because a lot of people that try to dis people that try to say Bitcoin uh, is, is worthless, what they say is Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. For example, silver has value as a, as a, as a good because it's, it's used in industrial uses and computers and things like okay. that, right? Okay. Okay. But they say Bitcoins are just pieces of data and they don't have any intrinsic value. Well, what we say is nothing has intrinsic value. So in a sense, when you say people agree on it, you, both you, Bruce, and, and, um, and Nick said people agree on it, I think in a sense that, that it does apply, what that means is that when you act to trade your dollars for Bitcoins, you're acknowledging in your action that you value Bitcoins. Yes. 
So that's all. That's all that we're. That's all that we're. That uh, that we're concerned with. People are. Va people are appreciating the va the market value of bitcoins through their actions. People are buying and trading bitcoins, and they're using it to buy market uh, market you know goods and services. Uh, I play poker with bitcoins because I can't play <laughs> poker online with real uh, with. Uh, I was gonna say real money with dollars anymore, because uh, the Obama administration shut that down. I was I was really into it. I really liked playing. I was too. Are, are I you, was too. Are you an online poker full I, tilt? Uh, back in the day, yeah. yeah, yeah. All of them full tilt. Party yeah. poker, poker stars. Yeah, that's, I love I love that. I love that. So yeah. I can't do that anymore, but I can no. do it with Bitcoin. It's interesting. Yeah. Don't tell me that. I don't want to know. But let me let me. <laughs> yeah, let me pass you to Nick though, because I've talked too long. I don't buy that at all. I think that whole argument is garbage because, you know, gold has some value in industry and silver does. And paper, obviously paper can be used to light a fire in your fireplace and that's about as good as the U.S. dollar. You know, that's just all nonsense because those values, uh, the intrinsic value of the substance of the, the thing, uh, yeah, it has some value apparently, but that has no relation whatsoever to the value of gold as a store of wealth, a store of money. So, you know, the same thing with digital. And by, the, by the way, the U.S. dollar is not really paper anyway. Like 99% of all U.S. dollars are just uh, fictional digital currency. And they're literally fictional. They just add more zeros at the Fed and type, type in more zeros and they made more dollars. So if you want to talk about a fictional digital currency, it's the U.S. dollar for sure. Uh, Bitcoin at least has, you know, state-of-the-art cryptography behind it that people cannot print more just because they feel like it. So, you know, money is, you know, money could be, uh, you know, clamshells. That's where that term, you know, clams comes from. It could be anything that we all say, yeah, there's only so much of this, and let's, let's call it money, let's treat it like money. You treat it like money, it's money. Well, like well, a word, if you use the word enough, well, I, 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 yeah, I, I do want to say one thing about that, though. It, it's not as though Bitcoin could have been money because Satoshi decided that it was money. The, it, the, when something becomes money is really up to historians to look back at because it's not easily definable. Like, uh, you know, there's a lot of historians that try to say that there was no money in certain societies of the past, but then uh, uh, historians that apply what I consider to be proper economic theory uh, are able to identify that things that uh, wither away that we can't find anymore must have been money because of the size of the markets that that we can see existed in, the, in in this society. So what I mean to say is, logically, bitcoins must have had value to people for some other use before they became money. If in fact they are money. They must have had some other use. And what I believe that use was is a facilitator of, of, of exchange through primarily anonymous means. I think that was the real, uh, that, I think that's the real interest. It becomes money once people, once, once the society treats it like money. Because what happens is uh, rather than being traded for one cent uh, at some point, it gets a, the, the value gets appreciated in like this kind of snowball effect because even people that didn't want to use Bitcoins before and saw no value in the anonymity start to value it simply because enough people are using it as a medium of exchange. So all, all I'm trying to say is that it's not money from the get-go. And it's possible, and I, I wouldn't say whether Bitcoins are money now or not, but it's possible... Uh, that at some point they became money, uh, but I don't know. But the point is, in the last two years, people have started to use this, this device in order to buy goods and services, sometimes illegal services, drugs and things like that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's not really up, to, it's not really, it's not Satoshi's decision or our decision when it becomes money. It becomes money when the society treats it like money and societies i mean that's that's kind of a difficult term to de to define as well but 
but, yeah. but 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 that's I don't really care whether it's money or not. All I care about is will it achieve? Will it help me achieve my end? If my end is to buy acid from on Silk Road, then that's I need bitcoins. You know, that's <laughs> no. I, seriously, yeah. Silk Road is this website. It's like the Amazon.com of drugs. Okay, and uh, and you can you can buy illegal drugs there using bitcoins. Wow. You know, it's on this uh, secret internet or whatever, but, <laughs> but, the, but, I mean, I'm just, the thing is, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's definitely one use case, and that's obviously one that's uh, very uh, widely reported. But there's, there's also, say, like, Google, uh, Google Wallet, I mean, everybody is going for a better form factor for money um, in day-to-day spending everywhere. I mean, the, the uh, subway fare, whatever, restaurants and, you know, hair salons and whatever it is. So if I my my thing is I, I believe that I mean big, by definition my definition Bitcoin is money already because I know that I can go I can now get a, I go to a, see a massage therapist and I can go to lunch and a, and dinner and I can spend with Bitcoin and I can also get cash readily with Bitcoin too so it's it, it's already become money in my world at least um, and we're uh, a lot of our initiatives are setting up all kinds of brick and brick and mortar businesses to accept it like of every type. CPAs, makeup artists, you know, you name it, vitamin stores, I mean, absolutely every kind of business all throughout Manhattan and throughout the world. Um, so as that spreads and our point of sale systems become better, I think it's going to happen like literally like wildfire. You're going to see that, wow, this is even easier and better than Google Wallet or any of these other initiatives. And it's really money. I mean, the, the other thing is that the, um, you know, back in the old days when they would literally travel down the, the trade route, like the Silk Road, and they would carry bags of gold and silver, um, somebody discovered that the, uh, you know, the goldsmith note on paper was a lot better form factor. So, so it, from a technology standpoint, carrying paper was much preferable to carrying bags of gold. So this is the same thing. It's, sometimes the technology itself, the fact that it's, it's uh, you know, as anonymous as you want it to be, and it's instantaneous, and it's zero fees, and all that. It's just the technology that's going to win, and the form factor of it. But so the by, and also the fact that it's decentralized, not issued by anybody, and it can't be, um, you know, uh, they can't create more of it just at a, on a whim. That's true, so Bruce. Of but those issues, mm-hmm, go ahead. I, I was going to say, but gold has the same um, qualities to it, and in a in a uh, well, them. well, I was going to say that in you a list. You can't give me a million of a Bitcoin, I mean, of a, of a gold. Well, I, I can if I have a, an interface provided to me by some bank in a, in a libertarian society uh, where there's no, yeah. you know, if there's no government, I can essentially do the same thing with gold. You know, I can do e gold exchanges and things right, like that. It has to, but it's not decentralized, it's still, it's still centralized. Well, Some people will I'm, view it as preferable, but it's not. There's no authority that could be corrupted. You know, well, yeah, I'm, and that's or, why. Th- that's why I put the. That's why I put the the um, the qualification that this would have to happen in a in a world where there's no government. Mm. They, it, 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 yeah. as long as there's a government, I see that something like a Bitcoin technology will have some sort of value to people. But I'm just saying that yeah. in a in a in an anarchist society. I, I don't think Bitcoin would last very long. I think uh, it would it would start to lose its its value pretty quickly because you can do the same thing with gold, and uh, and gold's been money much longer if than Bitcoin. So people trust gold. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Gold, you're, you can't do the same thing with gold. You can only do the same thing with a representation of like a digital currency that's backed by gold and then controlled by a central authority. So. Well, it's not a it's not a central a, a central a, a central business that a warehouse that holds your holds your gold for you. But there's yeah. a there's a like, like gold money. That now, right. Not a but but look, but Bruce, you you kept your you kept your bitcoins in my Bitcoin, and you lost them all. You were yeah. you were yeah. using a service to protect your bitcoins, just like people with gold yep. use banks to protect their gold. You know, so. There's right. definitely a value in having that. It doesn't matter what society you're living in. I'm, I'm just making the case that in a world without government, 
they that the, the bitcoins wouldn't have any value and that's just to let everybody that, that that's an investor know that's really the way you can gauge what's what's the future of bitcoin is how tyrannical is your government getting you know is are they, are they raising your taxes beyond the the point of of no return then then bitcoin will continuously go up but mm -hmm. if, if the government's collapsing because of you know debt ceilings and stuff and they start to pull austerity measures and destroy you know destroy part, big parts of the government and and liberalize their their uh, society then maybe bitcoins go down you know uh, then yeah. they start you know you know if they remove regulations on gold then suddenly everyone will switch to gold I don't know it's the job of the it's the job of people like you Bruce who are entrepreneurs to put your money where your mouth is and 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 tell us what's going to Show, show us by example what's going to be the uh, the thing that makes everybody money. But hey, well, let yeah. me let me pass I, you to I, Nick. I, I, okay. I, I keep I keep. Yeah, I, I'm talking too much. I'm tired. Nick is the guy. Look, Nick is the guy on the on the commercial. <laughs> He's the one that arrests Jason Biggs or detains him or whatever. Yeah, right? you know. I just, I just said Nick is the guy on the commercial that puts his hands on Jason Biggs and takes him away. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, I can see him doing that. Yeah, that's the tyrannical government. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. One, one thought about the, one, one other thought about the, uh, the idea. I mean, if, if there were no government and we were an anarchist, Society and uh, we had uh, companies. It would be a private company that would warehouse gold. I mean, basically, they're operating the same as gold money. But I, I disagree with one thing you said, and that is that, that Bitcoin would have no value because, in, in my opinion, um, Bitcoin is still superior because you don't need any gold and you don't need any warehouse and you don't need to trust any company with a fact with a warehouse of gold. It isn't going to just uh, you know burn up the trust and disappear in the night. You can protect your your own. Bitcoin. I mean, now you know, obviously I've learned the hard way. Lots of people have, but you there are, you can protect your own gold. You can protect your own Bitcoin easier than protecting your own gold. I think it's a lot easier to protect the, the Bitcoin digits. Uh, I, I think Bitcoin has opened the same vulnerability as as gold. I mean. You still have to, I mean, if, let's say you print your Bitcoins out on a piece of paper and then put it in a safety deposit box or in a, in a, in a safe in your house, it can be broken into just like if you put gold in that safe, you know? I mean, it has... Yeah, but there's other ways too. Like, you can, you can encrypt it to a button and then email it to uh, Switzerland, you know, or something. And you can literally leave the country without a stitch of clothing and you still have your Bitcoins. You can't do that with gold. You, you have to physically move. Uh, a metal, which is very heavy. So there's pros and cons, you know. That's true. It'll, it'll work its way out. Yeah. But either way, I mean, I think they're both good. I think they're, they're for their purposes, they're, they're different. Um, obviously, you can't carry actual gold around to go to lunch and, you know, shop uh, in the main street stores. Uh, but, but anyway, they, if there's, there are pros and cons. It's, it's evolving. I think that definitely gold, silver, and Bitcoin are um, the future. For sure, I think people are just tired of the uh, the, the banks, and especially the banks and the government. You know, I pointed out that uh, in China, the government owns the banks, and in the U.S., the bank. Well, either way, it's basically the same thing. They're in bed with each other, and people are fed up with it. Uh, I I hear what I hear what you're saying. Ask. Uh... <laughs> Uh, but you should ask Nick, Nick uh, what, what, uh, how they trained him to be a government agent, because that's the real question. Oh yeah, that's a great question. Well, they didn't. They, how did they tell you? They, uh, you know, they, they kind of just trusted me to, to, to do my own thing. They didn't really give me any training other than the, uh, the costume. The costume was pretty, um, pretty great. I have this really long overcoat and. <laughs> A really nice tie, and it really, you know, put me in the. I even had a badge. It was great. But <laughs> I. Real government, real government agents don't dress so well, probably. You know, I, I don't know. I think that if I were a government agent, I would look like that. <laughs> we we even had pieces. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, we were we were supposed to have guns, but 
Never got to use them. I, I guess our, we were always wearing our overcoats, so they just never really gave them to us. But we were armed. Interesting. We're supposed to be armed. What is the treasury? You were supposed to be a treasury department agent of some sort? Right. Or FBI or CIA? Uh, federal treasury, yeah. Federal treasury. Not FBI, though. No. Treasury. I wonder if the treasury even has their own law enforcement people. I don't know. I doubt it. Well, if... Uh, if, you know, Mr. Bitcoin starts to show his face, then, you know, we'll pop out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it'll probably be the FBI or the CIA. Yeah. Or NSA or yeah. something like that. Or they'll just give me a call, too. I mean, you know, after Sunday, hopefully, yeah. hopefully people will realize, will come to the senses and just call me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they can call you. Anytime they need to find Mr. So did your research about Satoshi and you, you know the whole mythology about who this guy is? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I think that, um, well, I, actually, I, I, I don't want to get too much into the episode. I don't want to give anything away. Um, but I, I did a, a little bit, but, you know, um, but not not a ton, no. You know that, that yeah. it seems a little bit like the episode is inspired by the, the New Yorker article. Um, maybe I, me. Maybe it's inspired by something else. I'm trying to think of, I the, know that article. There was a New Yorker article where this guy goes to a convention mm -hmm. and tries to find Mr. Bitcoin, a, right. a reporter. Yeah, I think that, that it may be based on that a little bit. It's, it's uh, the episode, there is a scene where um, it's in a convention. And I was there with in, you. It's in Chicago, and oh, yeah. um, you actually may or may not I know. see... Uh, you may actually meet the guy that created it. You may not, though. I don't want to. I'm not going to say. It, leave it in the uh -huh. air. <laughs> you know, one of the things we were the Bitcoin community was really intrigued with was that they, in the little synopsis, they called it a uh, an illegal cryptocurrency, like as if having a creating a currency was illegal. Nobody has claimed that it's illegal in the U.S. or the U.K. Right. I guess. I guess in this world, you know, this this slightly yeah. fictionalized world, it's illegal. Um, yeah. <laughs> there was a, there was a senator that was calling to make it officially illegal. Chuck Schumer. Okay. Yeah. The, um, he, yeah. He, okay. So you heard that. One guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Who were the writers that wrote this to come up with these stories? You know, they, they I, I don't know, I've, I've never met the writers, um, but I know that they are basically always working. I know that. <laughs> did they change the script while you were on? They did. We got script changes every day. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm under the impression that that's just always happening. And it's just the way it goes because they're um, constantly in need of adjustments, uh, whether it be just for... A location situation, or um, a line adjustment, or the fact that this character is not in the scene anymore, so they need to <laughs> take out lines, or whatever it is. But they are always, always working, and yeah, they they don't get a break. Fascinating. <laughs> They're really on the cutting edge of uh, what's happening. They must be scouring the news to find uh, stories like this. Yeah. Um, we got to them for up. finding these hot stories. Absolutely. Um, here, I'm yeah, so to... I guess we got to wrap it up here, uh, Bruce. Yeah, yeah, it's time, isn't it? I, 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 I'm not, I don't have my time clock here because I'm all remote on the phone and everything, but uh, in spite of our technical glitches, I'm so appreciative of you guys uh, taking the time to join us uh, before this episode airs on Sunday. I really appreciate you coming into the studio. No Thanks. problem, no problem. Thanks for having us. You're going to watch, right? Episode, which is oh, yeah, I'll be watching watch it. it. Anyway, everybody will. I, I guess that... On YouTube, go to Frax Girl. C-R-A-X Girl. Frax Girl on YouTube. Check that out. Science of Praxeology. Yeah. Praxeology. Yeah, you'll learn all about you know, things you never knew you needed to know. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Nick. Uh, Nicholas Flower. Thank Robert you. Robert Taylor. Again, so appreciate it. We're going to do this again.
Thank you so much. Bye. Down to earth. Jason Biggs was really cool. Uh, my one of my favorite moments on set. Well, not on set, just you know, yeah. in the experience was my interaction, my first interaction with Jason Biggs. I had to be at the van at seven thirty in the morning um, in like Midtown, and we were just to be driven to the studio, and no one's really around. It's kind of you know just. The city's just kind of sleeping still. Right. And I see a van, and it has the sign that says the good wife, and the, there's just two people in the van. It's uh, the driver and the passenger. And the passenger, is, his window is down, and I start walking up, and the passenger's like, Nicholas Flower? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, Jason Biggs. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is blown. And so I got in the van, and just the... The three of us kind of just yeah. rode to the studio together, and yeah. it was, it was funny. It was, it was you know, it, I didn't want to talk to him too much because it was seven thirty in the morning. Right. Like we're all kind of groggy, just having our morning coffee. But but I mean, he he dresses <laughs> like in the in like these just casual like yeah. homeboy jeans and like you know just like it's, I think he got even some with a backpack and just yeah. like a grungy jacket and yeah, he's just guy. really chill. Yeah. He's really really cool. Yeah. Uh, and I thought it was really interesting. Um, Seeing him kind of, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say starstruck, but yeah, a little starstruck with Bob Balaban. Oh, yeah? I, yeah, I mean, you know, it, like, you know, Bob Balaban's, it, it's Bob Balaban, you know, so, and they had never met. And Robert Taylor, they're in the studio in New York. I'm in Las Vegas. So can you, hey guys. Uh, uh, Bruce, <laughs> Bruce, we're actually taking over. We're the hosts today. Yes. You're the host. That's right. And I'm the guest. So you can ask me questions. <laughs> Go ahead, ask. <laughs> well, I, I also want to. I want to make clear. You're a no. cast. I, uh, Nick is a cast member. I was standing in that day when we when we met. So I I'm not a cast member. So you're oh you're not a, not a regular cast member, but you're standing in. Well, you right. were in the cast that day. Is that it? No, 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 no. Only Nick. He, he's the he's the guy that's going to get the credits on the show. Oh, right? okay, you're, okay. You're in the cast of my cool. Heart. He's and I. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. The, I've already been um, told to ask, obviously, the, the obvious question. Um, what is it like to work with Juliana Margulies? Margulies. How do you say your last name? <laughs> well, it was it was really great. She was very nice. Um, when I got on set, the very first moment, it was it was pretty funny. I didn't recognize her. Um, you know, we went in for our rehearsal and we started it up. It was with Jason Biggs and uh, David Furr, and she interrupts the scene. Um, and so here, here she comes, and you know she's not in costume yet. She hasn't, she hasn't uh, done costume or makeup. And she comes in and does her lines, and I'm like, oh, I wonder why her stand-in is reading her lines. And then she introduces herself, <laughs> and it was the straight hair too. I, I, you know, grew up watching ER, and so, you know, I. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bitcoin Show. This is a live CES Consumer Electronics Show, 2012 edition. And uh, we have an amazing opportunity to have uh, the cast members from The Good Wife. You've heard of The Good Wife on CBS. Everybody watches it. And, uh, the, and everybody in the Bitcoin world knows that there's going to be a Bitcoin episode this Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. So we have with us uh, Nicholas Flower Hi. and Robert Taylor. So stay tuned.
Hey everybody, welcome to the Bitcoin Show. This is Bruce Wagner, you know, and uh, I am live here in C at CES, uh, Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And um, I just arrived late last night, but uh, we got the most incredible coup because everyone knows that, as I said, the, the Good Wife on CBS is doing a major episode all about Bitcoin. It's called Bitcoin for Dummies is the title of the episode. And they're going to talk about Satoshi and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, but anyway, we got a major coup because we have with us some of the cast members from The Good Wife. And uh, so with us are Nicholas Flower. The dollar. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how we measure Bitcoin time by the value of Bitcoin. Right. But when it was $7, that's when I got, I got in at $1.98. You know, it was <laughs> so funny. Then when it hit 30, I cried. Yeah. <laughs> I right. bought it at 30 and sold it at a dollar. <laughs> So, um, okay, so Nicholas, what, um, when, uh, like, how, how long ago did you, were you hand, and you, the first time you heard the word Bitcoin then? A few weeks ago? Yeah, well, I guess we shot the episode maybe Harry? a month ago, and I had, I was handed the script maybe a week before we shot the, the episode, and so I had very, yeah. Very little time to kind of you know Digest do, it. do my do my research, but I, I did and you know kind of got the general overview of you know, it's obviously been around for mm -hmm. a while now to pick up some speed, but um, yeah, I found it really really interesting. I, I was talking to Robert earlier. I, I find it so interesting that uh, it's really hard mm -hmm. to counterfeit. Cool. I think that's pretty cool. And, uh, but yeah, I, I was handed the script a week before. I, I knew nothing about it. So I did my research and kind of just jumped in. I can ask him a couple of questions. So sure. uh, <laughs> how about Jason Biggs? How, yeah, I thought he was super to have this idea of, of her with curly hair. And so I just, it was kind of embarrassing, it really was, but uh, she was very, very nice. Um, she was very accessible and introduced herself and just was totally normal. Very, very relaxed, yes. funny. She was, you know. That's how, that's how I like my stars, to be hot and accessible. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you need to be. Yeah. You know, she, a. she was uh, <laughs> talking with people on set and just being really nice. She, she wasn't like... Um, it, it wasn't like she needed everyone to know that the that she was on set. She just kind of was on set, you know. It was just living yeah. and and doing her her job. That's great. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's how she, people should be. People are just people anyway. So I people agree. that are full of themselves are just full of themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna come back to the gossip and, and dish the dirt. As I wanna I wanna I have a lot more about that. But I want to know about Bitcoin. Had you ever heard of Bitcoin before you were handed this script? No, I had not. You guys? I had not. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Robert, I have talked with you, and I found out you, you were already a Bitcoin fan, right? You, how, when did you find out about it, Robert? I, I, I don't know specifically the, the, the date, but I do remember being in California, and I think it was either late 09 or early... I no, you know, I I feel like it was somewhere mid or or late '09 is when I first heard about it, and I didn't get really into it until it got very close to reaching parity with.